media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Oslo Middle South Africa has already seen a return on investments on its newly commissioned Working at Heights virtual reality training program used to determine trainees' fear of heights and to test their functioning at heights. Nadine James has more. The development of the program was a collaborative effort undertaken by Oslo Mito, performance management consultancy LRMG, and animation and game development studio Seamonster. LRMG Digital Business Development Executive Lee Candia explains. The problem that they were having was that they were training a lot of people and more than 50% of those people couldn't actually do the job of working at heights. Uh, and that was the problem they brought to us. How do we make this better? And how do we use digital as the enabler to make that better? So at a very base level. The solution in collaboration with Seamonster and Oslo Metal that we, we formulated was a virtual reality immersive experience. Oslo Metal Talent Management and Innovation Manager Terence Harrison explains his reasoning for implementing this type of solution. The environment we operate in is obviously very dangerous. It's industrial, it's, there's lots of high pressures, high temperatures, electrical, etc. If you're working in those environments, it's important to train and know the, what, what can hurt you. But that needs to be done in a safe environment. So converting knowledge, which you get through e-learning or classroom-based training, into the practical portion to develop the skill takes practice. But we can't allow our, our employees to go into a, a, a plant situation and do the practicing because they can get hurt or they can hurt people. So I found it quite uh, pertinent right at this stage now to say, okay, with the technology exists, let's create the virtual world, which should be a simulation of the real world and not just some other game uh, module that you've pulled off of, of an internet site, but the real world situation that we find ourselves in. Put the person into that in the virtual reality and allow them to experience it allow them to apply their knowledge in context so that they can actually develop the skills so it becomes second nature like driving. Seamonster client service head Lebo Lacoma elaborates on the benefits of this type of technology. Through the use of technology what we do is we take the user and we immerse them in that world and in this world what they have to perform are a series of very I'm going to say basic tasks they've got to call an elevator down they've got to be able to open it they've got to take that journey up and once they're at the top they have to perform one or two tasks while all this is happening in the background what we're doing is we're measuring heart rate we're choosing to focus and assess where people are looking all is a mechanism of determining whether they are in fact suited or suitable for working at heights or not. Harrison adds that the benefits to Arslimato have been significant. There's huge benefit to us as a company because we're keeping our people safe. That's our number one priority. It's one of our values. It's safety above all else. And of course then um, as you go along that route, it, it becomes cheaper in terms of people are not having incidences, they're not breaking equipment, etc. I think we've already benefited hugely. I mean, we've, we, we commissioned it towards the end of last year. So we kicked off this year by screening our new intakes. And, and in our pipeline, we have about 1,300 uh, people in our pipeline, our development pipeline, so there's huge numbers. And um, to have those people go through a four-year training program or a three-year training program only to find out at the end that they can't work at heights or they, they freeze and then they fall off or get hurt or hurt somebody. Um, that benefit we've already realized right now. So through the screening process, we've found a number of people that can't cope with heights and we've already rooted them into other directions. So it's not an elimination process per se, it's more a process of, of aligning people so that they can work in a natural environment. So if they're not, it's not appropriate for them to do a specific trade, we would, we would offer an alternative trade to them. Other news making headlines, CISO to focus on strengthening engineering industry through effective leadership, and ESCOM cannot commit to nuclear expansion. Industry body Consulting Engineers South Africa has set effective ethical leadership and embracing the fourth industrial revolution as its priorities for this year. Leadership starts with values and purpose both of which are underpinned through governance and process. The mantras, nothing worth achieving comes easy, as well as hard work and honesty are fundamental to success, should remain 
the cornerstone of everything we do. As a nation, we need to answer the question of how to skill more than a generation of our country, such that we not only develop skills, but also address the social imbalances that have scarred our communities. South Africa's power utility, ESCOM, says it cannot afford a nuclear power station expansion. Nuclear, is it affordable? If I, I don't have a sustainable balance sheet for the current 700 billion of assets of generation, transmission and distribution now, I can't go and commit to additional expenditure around nuclear program. I need to ensure that I can sustain my current asset base to ensure that we deliver based on the 40,000 odd megawatts, the networks and the distribution first. Because if I have limited funds, I can't be worrying about the future build if I can't sustain my existing operations. So from our side, we will focus on maintaining the current assets, completing the build program that we committed to, and then we'll have to look at whether ESCOM on its balance sheet can sustain a nuclear program going forward. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.